So next we are going to discuss a topic which has been included as a separate chapter in Harrison which is why you know it deserves its own importance that is the IgG4 related disease. IgG4 related disease. So we are discussing it here because this is a immune mediated disorder. Okay. This is a immune mediated disorder and uh, this is again a multi system affection. Okay. A multi system disorder. So what is this IgG4 related disease? Uh, this term IgG4 related disease is actually an umbrella term. Okay. This is a umbrella term for several disorders which have in common a finding that this is related to the IgG4 production by the plasma cells. So how does this disorder result? That is what we are going to see first. See IgG4 related disease is an immune mediated disorder but what exactly is the uh, inciting agent or why a IgG4 related disorder occurs? What is the triggering factor? It is still unknown. But what happens is that as a result of exposure to some triggering factor, there occurs a T cell B cell interaction. Okay, a T cell B cell interaction. And this T cell B cell interaction results in one is that there will be production of various cytokines. Okay, production of various cytokines. And these cytokines can trigger a fibrotic process. Okay, it can trigger a fibrotic process resulting in tumor like lesions. Okay, resulting in tumor like lesions. Okay, it is not tumor but tumor like lesions. And these tumor like lesions can occur in various organs. Okay, that is what happens. And also, uh, the end result of the cytokine production is not just a production of tumor like lesions. You will have lot of plasma cell activation. Okay. So you will have lot of plasma cell activation and you will have um, the B cells producing the various antibodies of which you have a dominant IgG4 response. Okay, a dominant IgG4 response. So let's just try to summarize in the form of a, a picture. Yes, you see here the pathogenesis of your uh, IgG4 related disease. At the various sites of disease, which means there are different organs in which it can produce manifestations. So this is your B cell and uh, this is your T cell. So among the T cells, it is the CD4 T cells that are most important. CD4 T cells. And you can see there is an interaction between your B cells as well as T cells by means of your T cell receptor there is an interaction and subsequent production of various cytokines like interleukin 1 beta, TGF beta, uh, interferon gamma. So all these cytokines are produced by the CD4 T cells and you see there is a fibrotic process and this fibrotic process that occurs in IgG4 related disease is referred to as a Storyform pattern of fibrosis. Storyform pattern of fibrosis. Storyform is basically meaning mat like. Okay, just like you know the mats, you can have uh, fibrosis. That is called a storyform pattern of fibrosis. So I told you it's not just about fibrosis, the T cell B cell interaction. So this again is a T cell, this again is a B cell. So they can also interact within the lymph nodes uh, and the extranodal germinal centers. And this interaction also results in uh, like uh, you know increase in the population of plasma cells resulting in release of various antibodies and especially of the IgG4 subtype. IgG4 subtype because this immunoglobulin G is having various subtypes like 1, 2, 3, 4 and it is predominantly a IgG4 response that occurs. Okay. So that's about the etiopathogenesis of IgG4 related disease. Okay. Now coming to the clinical features, how will it clinically manifest? Clinical features of IgG4 related disease. See because it produces fibrosis and subsequent tumor like lesions, often you can have uh, multiple organ 
or organ system involvement where you have all these tumor like lesions so this can occur anywhere okay in fact you know anywhere and everywhere uh, it can occur so just i'll focus first on the most important uh, areas of uh, uh, igg4 related disease affection so it can affect your uh, lacrimal glands it can affect your lacrimal glands it can affect your salivary glands like your submandibular glands parotid glands so when it affects these glands what will happen there will be enlargement of these glands as well as symptoms corresponding to the dysfunction of these glands will occur okay so lacrimal glands salivary glands can be affected then you can have affection of your thyroid okay thyroid is there so then you can have your uh, your brain affection okay in your central nervous system you can have affection of various sites either it can be in the meninges meninges your pituitary stalk okay your pituitary stalk so meninges means either the pachy meninges or lepto meninges either can be involved so then you can have involvement of your lungs okay lungs you can have involvement of your liver as well as the the biliary system biliary system the pancreas may be involved there can be retroperitoneal involvement retroperitoneal involvement okay so all these are uh, some of the important sites of uh, your uh, uh, igg4 related disease the prostate also so let's see you know the the again what happens in these individual sites so i'll first show you a picture so this is a a patient with a lacrimal gland affection you see it is almost like a mass a mass in the lacrimal gland so that is what i said you know tumor like lesions you can see in the various uh, regions affected so you can see a, a lacrimal region mass here uh, another patient here presenting with a submandibular gland swelling a submandibular gland swelling okay and uh, see when it affects the uh, thyroid gland you know as i see here the thyroid gland sometimes it can produce dense fibrosis and you remember the term that we learned in the endocrinology module that is your redel's thyroiditis redel's thyroiditis so i told you uh, while we discussed that entity that this is characterized by a firm okay a firm to hard thyroid gland okay so it is because of the extensive uh, fibrosis that occurs in the thyroid gland Uh, in uh, redel thyroiditis and now it is thought that this redel thyroiditis is actually a form of igg4 related disease okay so it can affect your uh, central nervous system the meninges the pituitary stalk so when it affects the pituitary stalk it can uh, interfere with the hormonal release as well and uh, it can produce a manifestation of a meningitis a chronic meningitis sometimes and uh, you can have a pachy meningeal involvement lepto meningeal involvement in the lungs it can produce uh, sometimes uh, interstitial lung disease sometimes you know you can have tumor like lesions in the lung which may be mistaken for a lung malignancy and liver also you can have um, a fibrosis uh, involving your liver the biliary system resulting in maybe jaundice pancreas uh, sometimes resulting in an enlarged pancreas often referred to as a sausage shaped pancreas okay sausage shaped pancreas and retroperitoneal fibrosis so if you remember uh, the retroperitoneal fibrosis there was an entity uh, which was known before as the ormans disease okay which was an idiopathic retroperitoneal fibrosis but now it is understood that this this ormans disease is in fact a subtype of your igg4 related disease and also you can have involvement of your prostate so various organ and organ system involvements can occur in case of igg4 related disease that is why i told you this is a very very heterogeneous disease now just to sum up everything in a picture about the involvement of igg4 related disease uh, it can involve extensively i told you uh, in the central nervous system it can involve the pituitary stalk the meninges the lacrimal gland involvement the, the salivary gland involvement in the lungs uh, interstitial pneumonia interstitial lung disease tumor like lesions chronic thyroiditis sometimes you can have a, a lymphadenopathy maybe just a presentation as a hilar lymphadenopathy 
you can have a hepatic involvement resulting in a cholangitis pseudo tumor like um, presentation as well sometimes you might find that the patient has almost a mass might be mistaken for a hepatocellular carcinoma even the uh, kidney it is important that the involvement is again to the interstitium not the glomerulus it is an interstitial involvement that can occur but it is not very common uh, renal involvement uh, you can have autoimmune pancreatitis uh, retroperitoneal fibrosis prostatitis gi mucosal epithelia so even when i show this picture to you let me remind you one thing a particular individual may not have all these manifestations sometimes the presentation may be just with a, a salivary gland involvement and a lacrimal gland involvement sometimes with a, a, a retroperitoneal fibrosis alone sometimes with a combination which which means multiple organs being involved so many of the previously recognized entities for which we did not have a obvious uh, reason are now classified under the umbrella of IgG4 related disease including the autoimmune pancreatitis okay previously you used to coin some um, autoimmune pancreatitis which is actually a IgG4 related disease ormond's disease we have already said ormond's disease okay and another syndrome that is your mikulic syndrome which is characterized by involvement of your lacrimal and salivary glands i'm sure that you have learned this in your surgery lessons so all these um, are now characterized as probably a subtype of your igg4 related disease so is your tolosa hunt syndrome okay tolosa hunt syndrome which is a, a granuloma idiopathic a granulomatous involvement of your okay uh, which which can actually produce a painful uh, visual loss or maybe involvement of some cranial nerves also when it extends to the region of cavernous sinus okay so these are the uh, uh, important points with respect to the clinical features of igg4 related disease okay so all these entities are now coming under igg4 related disease now having seen uh, in detail regarding the clinical features of igg4 related disease how will you investigate how will you diagnose igg4 related disease investigation first of all the serum igg4 values serum igg4 values will be elevated okay but if you ask me is this is this going to be the diagnostic test of choice answer is no because uh, around 20 to 30 percentage of patients may have a normal serum igg4 especially individuals with a retroperitoneal fibrosis you might find that the levels of serum levels of igg4 will be normal okay maybe normal so you cannot totally rely on a serum igg4 levels though you expect it to be on the higher side so what is going to be your definitive diagnosis it is definitely going to be a biopsy and the biopsy in case of uh, uh, igg4 related disease will show three important features number 1 being a lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate naturally you will have a good infiltrate of your lymphocytes and plasma cells second is the pattern of fibrosis that i already told you the story form a uh, pattern of fibrosis and third you will also have an involvement of vessels that is a uh, because you have plenty of lymphocytes and fibrosis you will have an obliterative phlebitis obliterative phlebitis so these are the important pathological findings that you expect in case of igg4 related disease and how do you confirm this again you know you do a immunohistochemistry for your igg4 so you will have a positive Uh, immunohistochemistry for your igg4 related disease from the biopsy sample okay it will be showing that brown color on uh, igg4 so once again let's uh, go back to the uh, the pathology uh, slide okay so what you what you are seeing here is the uh, biopsy of a patient uh, who actually suffered from a igg4 related disease so you see here the biopsy from the uh, salivary gland one thing is quite obvious is that you can see sheets of lymphocytes so definitely there is a lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate and along with that are you able to appreciate lots of fibrosis here yes lots of fibrosis so that is your story form pattern of fibrosis and also the vessel involvement the obliterative phlebitis so in this same specimen if you do a immunohistochemistry you will get a positive igg4 as well okay so that is how you will diagnose uh, igg4 related disease now coming to the treatment 
So though it is a, it produces tumor-like lesions which can scare some of, uh, you know, the, the uh, physicians, you know, who sometimes on first seeing the, uh, the image or on, on a clinical examination, you might uh, suspect malignancy, okay, because the, because of the extensive fibrosis, suppose you have a, a lymph node uh, in enlargement or maybe a salivary gland enlargement, you will notice that this is very hard. So on clinical examination, you may suspect that, okay, could this be a, a, a malignancy? But again, uh, remember, this is a, a disease which is responsive to treatment and your drug of choice is going to be steroids. Drug of choice is going to be steroids. So you can start the patient on steroids and subsequently taper the dose of steroids. The role of your steroid sparing agents like mycophenolate, uh, asathioprine is not definite. Okay, we do not have uh, definite studies because see this disease has been coined only since 2003. Okay, so our, our understanding of the disease is only for a, a duration of say around, uh, you know, less than 20 years now. So this was actually discovered in 2003, first described in Japan. So the drug of choice for this condition will be steroids. And if the condition is not responding to steroids or if you have a presentation which is very severe, in that case, you can also think of adding rituximab. Okay, rituximab uh, is an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody. So it has shown good response in patients with IgG4 related disease. So some individuals you might require combination of steroids as well as rituximab. So that's it about this topic of IgG4 related disease. Now let me tell you one thing. Uh, this is a question that can definitely be asked in your exams. One that in the uh, latest edition of Harrison, they have given it as a separate chapter. So, and this is a disease which is uh, only for the past two decades. So, you know, you have got to have an understanding of such an entity. Because as I discussed, previously you would call a particular disease where you did not know the etiology as maybe an idiopathic disease, correct? So, which is why certain diseases like say your Tolosa Hunt syndrome, or autoimmune pancreatitis or your Mikulic syndrome, you, you didn't know what exactly caused them. But now you know that these disorders all fall under the same umbrella of IgG4 related disease. Okay, see that is because why you know your Tolosa Hunt syndrome responds to steroids because this is a steroid responsive condition. Okay, so I hope this uh, entity is very clear to you.